the modern gig economy and the modern Democrat leaders, why one is good and one is not so good. I'm Mark Stewart. This is the Daily Fire for September 26th. So the gig economy has come to be known as that with people temporarily working, not even face-to-face -face in a plant. Often their work is from their home or from a remote office on the road, could be on the beach, doing good work and then moving on not being tied to long-term benefits, not being tied to a career with the company, but still raising their skills so that they have a career that could be latched onto by any company. Or maybe they branch, branch out and start doing them their business without a company at all because they become little entrepreneurs. This is a good thing. The gig economy lets people's skills speak for themselves, not their history, not their loyalty. Fine, they don't have to be loyal. They can add skills where needed. A company gets the benefit of not being tethered to somebody when those skills are no longer needed. Thank you, you've done a good job. We don't need you for the next six months. And they're happy to move on because they're used to employing a new set of skills. That's the other benefit. When you're tied to a one company career, you're at the mercy of that company sustaining itself really well and having a continued position for you. When you don't have that expectation, you better yourself. You have the freedom to move on. No, you don't have a health care policy but you have more money with which to buy a policy of your own. Companies don't have to be worried about taking on an obligation that they then, oh, once we let this person go, we have to pay a severance fee. There may be extra benefits. We subject ourselves to a lawsuit if we haven't done everything right. No, they're contractors. So employment law doesn't become such a burden to employers. It's the best possible match. Who could be against that? <laughs> My Democrat Party's leaders, Bernie Sanders, for one, who does not like Uber. He's on record that way. Hillary Clinton's another. Bill de Blasio, mayor of New York. They do not like Uber, which is the epitome of a business that helps individual entrepreneurs. They don't like it because it goes against the established unionized businesses that they've come to get benefits from as politicians that they've come to get used to. These old school leaders unfortunately have a lot of sway. It's too bad because millennials don't vote with the kind of, well, foot power as 70-somethings and 80-somethings, okay? All they do is pay attention when you're in your 80s to what's going on politically. They vote with like 90% ratios. Millennials vote with like 30% ratios. So people are still listening to the older generation. But if the older generation it has its ears open, I think even they are attuned to the goodness of moving about within the economy to make your own life better, to make your employer's life better. I'm in favor of both. I want to Uberize government as well. I want there to be a government that has short-term employment, bring on people at high wages for the skills that are needed at the time, then let them go without being tethered to some sort of long-term. And for this state, it happens after just 10 years, you get tenure in the teaching, you, you, get, you get vested after just 10 years, which gives you benefits, okay? Uberizing government means the state is not tethered. It can go after good talent, but use them for a short period of time. You know which government did this really well? Singapore, under Lee Kuan Yew, they attracted talent from all of Asia and even Europe to help their government be better at, and they paid high salaries to attract people. 
I want to do the same. I want Connecticut's workers to actually have higher salaries than they do now, less benefits. So the state's cost is actually lower, but getting more talent. Who's in the way of that? Unions who stay in traditional mode. Now, there are a lot of unionists who realize unions have to change. Get out of traditional mode. It's better for your own workforce. But right now, unions are often scared of individual entrepreneurs. Uh, Teamsters Union doesn't want to reclassify, or sorry, they want to classify individual contractors as employers. They know that that stymies employers and keeps them tethered to the union work that they've had. This has to go. This is a clamp on commerce and no commerce should be clamped if it's done ethically and safely. We should be doing that not only in private but in government as well. And millennials, you who are getting used to the gig economy, you ought to be voting in favor of a government that can be just the way you want and build you up even better. I'm Mark Stewart. Thank you.